Hi, this is Gail with Beaded Jewelry Diva, and today this is going to be our beaded chainmail tutorial. So we'll be making this bracelet, and even if you don't normally do chainmail, you might want to stick around for this one because it's a really easy pattern and it's really very pretty. Now this is the bracelet we're going to be doing today, but I will also show you this bracelet and explain to you the differences and how I did it differently so you can see a different construction for it. I'll also have a couple of other ideas for how to use this particular beaded chainmail pattern. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up because it really does help keep me encouraged. And if you don't already subscribe, hit the subscribe button and remember to also hit the bell button and then you'll be notified whenever I have a new video up. Now, before I get started, I'll also say that I do have some bloopers at the end, so <laughs> go ahead and keep watching for those. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and see what we need to get started. For supplies, I have the following. I have some large jump rings. These are 18 gauge, and they are 6 millimeter inside diameter, 8 millimeters outside diameter. I have four small jump rings, and these are 18 gauge, 3.5 millimeters inside, 5.5 millimeters outside diameter. I have some Swarovskis. These are 6 millimeter bicones. I have a piece of scrap wire, but you could also have a paper clip on hand. I have two pairs of pliers. Um, both of these are coated with tool magic, but absolutely you do not have to have that. I just happen to like them. It helps keep my pliers from slipping off. You'll also need whatever clasp you want to use and uh, that's it for supplies so let's get started. I started by taking a piece of the scrap wire and putting it um, and sliding on a small jump ring and closing the small jump ring. Onto the small jump ring I added two large jump rings and closed them. And to the two large jump rings I added another two large jump rings and I closed them. Now, the small jump ring is where you're going to put your clasp later on, and the piece of wire is really just to hold on to things. And like I said, you can use a uh, paper clip for that if you want to. Now, what you want to do is spread open your jump rings. So they kind of look like a flower. Take your per um, Swarovski or your crystal or whatever it is that you're using, and you put it in the middle of it and you close it. So it looks like this. Then you're going to take another one of your large jump rings. And by the way, you may as well open up pretty much all your jump rings or at least a bunch at the same time because everything after this point is going to use open jump rings. So now I've got one jump ring through. Whoopsie daisy. One of the, another one of the large jump rings through, close it, and pick up another one of the large jump rings and do the same. I'm going to take it, slide it through the little cage, and this is always easier said than done. <laughs> How about I just use my fingers and that seems to work better. Yay. Okay, close it. And you've got your first capture. You may be able to see that this um, bicone kind of nestles into the rings. And we've got a fair amount of, of space up here to go ahead and put extra jump rings. And the bicones are easiest when you're first learning this as you... Um, get more experience in this particular pattern. You can try using the fire polished or round beads or whatever, but starting out, the bicones are easiest. Okay, so we've got two rings on, and what do we need to do? We need to add two more jump rings. So with two jump rings on, I've got to take another open ring and put it through, close it up, take another one, and do the same thing. Put it through the same two, making sure not to hit the other closed jump ring. You don't want it to go through that. Then you're once again going to open it up like a little flower. Make sure that you've got um, 
a ring on all four sides. So we've got uh, the four open rings. And just as a hint, if one of those rings starts kind of sneaking to the center some, go ahead and pull it out now. It makes it easier to get this in and close it. So I've got my Swarovski, drop it in and close it up. And if, again, if you have a little bit of problem closing it up because the Swarovski is not sitting in there right, what you can do is you can take a, a head pin or a piece of scrap wire and just situate it. So there I've moved it around so the hole's coming through the top and it makes it a whole lot easier to close up the jump ring. Now I've got uh, two jump rings on and if you look at it, if you kind of spread it apart, it almost looks like you are ready to add another crystal. You are not. You always have to have two sets or two pairs of dangling rings off your last crystal because if you just have one it's not going to work or one pair so add on a second set of jump rings just like we've been doing and again make sure that you travel only through one set of jump rings and you don't get the two jump rings plus the one that you just added I've done that uh, a few too many times, so to speak. Take your crystal, plop it in, close up the rings, and if they don't want to close properly, make sure that you've got your crystal situated. And that helps to close it up. Well, mine's wanting to keep popping out. And especially in the beginning, or especially the first few that you do, um, they'll have the tendency to pop out a little bit easier. Um, as you get to like three or four or more on the ring, they don't seem to want to pop out as much. They seem to behave better. All right, so I've got three cages going. So it's looking like this so far. And let me go ahead and put a bunch more on off camera and then we'll come back for the clasp and different design ideas, different colors, and you'll see what else you can do with this simple set of caged uh, chain mail. All right, you see that I have completed this bracelet. I've put another um, final circle or final jump ring on this end and I took the wire off the other end. Now it's time to put on our clasp. If for this particular one, I have chosen an S clasp, which I made just with using the Swarovski crystal again to kind of match my bracelet. And if you want to see a, a tutorial on how to make this kind of clasp, just let me know. Leave a comment down below. To put it on, what I usually do is I open it slightly to the side, slip it in the jump ring, on the end, close it up, and the other side that I'm going to use to um, usually hook it on and off, it's going to be open just a little bit more and just slide it on. Now if you have problems with this jump ring where it's not quite big enough, just go ahead and uh, make one, just uh, use a jump ring that's just a little bit bigger. So that'll help you take the bracelet on and off. So here's this one. Now let me show you a few other items using slightly different techniques so you can get an idea of what else you can do with this particular uh, chainmail pattern. Okay, here is another bracelet. And you see a difference here is instead of connecting all these directly to each other, I have gone ahead and when I closed this, I closed it with two smaller jump rings. So one of the effects is that, is that it looks like each side of the jump ring is kind of heading towards the middle, whereas on this one, all the um, V's are facing in the same direction. In this case, the V's, so the V's are facing in, in the same direction or in opposite directions. <laughs> opposite directions. So that's one way to go ahead and do this. Again, instead of just hooking it directly to the next link, just go ahead and put in some extra jump rings in between. 
I also used a Loptical clasp on it and I used two jump rings on the end. And then because my lost lobster claw clasp wasn't large enough to handle two jump rings, I just threaded one extra jump ring on and then I dangled some uh, crystals from it. So here is a second idea for a bracelet. All right, this set of earrings utilizes the same basic techniques, but this time I've used something slightly different. I've used a variation of another pattern called Shaggy Loops, and I do have a video on Shaggy Loops, that um, uses these smaller jump rings to kind of create um, a hat, <laughs> I guess. And you can see on this side also, I have them facing um, in this direction, and for these top and bottom ones, I have them facing in the opposite direction. You can do it whatever way you want to. And then I've used a large jump ring at the end, and I've put on a large crystal. So that's this particular set of breaks, so our set of earrings. Now let's contrast these with the next set. And this set is a little bit, it's based on the same idea, but it's done a little differently. So in this one, I used a true shaggy loops and the shaggy loops are these extra little jump rings that hang off either end. And this is the traditional shaggy loops style. Whereas this one is the flipped up version of the shaggy loops where the as a matter of fact, if, if I do it like this, maybe it helps it because you see the loops are facing down and I put it up in this direction. The loops are um, like little hats or little ears. This one, I also used three different colors of jump rings. So that made it, uh, give it a little bit more interest, I think. At the bottom, I also used two different sizes of jump rings to give it uh, a um, circle and circle effect. And of course, I used a tassel. So this is another idea for using this particular chainmail beading pattern. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I would like you to go ahead and vote. Which one of these do you like best? Do you like the green earrings, the pink earrings? Do you like the green bracelet or do you like the red bracelet the best? Go ahead, leave me a comment, and let me know which one you prefer. Well, this is Gail getting ready to sign out for the day, saying, um, by the way, stay tuned for the bloopers, because yes, I have more. <laughs> also, remember to go ahead and hit the subscribe, and also hit the bell, so you um, will always get notified when I put a new video up. This is Gail signing out for the day, saying, have yourself a beautiful day. Bye! A size uh, 10 millimeter outside diameter, 8 millimeter inside diameter. We also have two smaller jump rings. These are, are these too big? Hold on a sec. I've started by opening a bunch of my big jump rings and I've closed two of my small jump rings. Great, which ones are closed? I'm opening are? up a bunch of my uh, large, pl uh, large pliers. Now right. I'm going to take another large jump ring and I'm going to put it through darn it I've uh, brought up the sides a little bit because because this isn't working what in the world is going on of the shaggy loops stitch or beading pattern or it's not a beading pattern it's a chainmail pattern